Hi, I'm JC. Let's get started doing our microneedling. I, like probably you, have very sensitive skin. It's dry, I'm perimenopausal, and I also have some rosacea. So I am thrilled to be able to do this at home, but I also really am very gentle. So I'm gonna walk you through what I do and how I do it. So I just got out of the shower and I've taken off all my makeup and I've thoroughly uh, double cleansed my face. So first thing we're gonna do here is just get all of my hair up and out of the way so that we don't get hair involved. You can then choose to either use alcohol on a pad to disinfect your face. I don't do that because it's so harsh. I use um, hypochlorous acid. Hypochlorous acid also disinfects, but it's very gentle and it doesn't leave my skin feeling quite as stripped and dry as alcohol does. So either way, you do need to disinfect your face because we don't want to accidentally embed any germs or bacteria into our face and get an infection. I don't go real deep on my microneedling and I also have fairly high pain tolerance so I don't use the lidocaine very often but if you want to you absolutely can take some lidocaine and an old makeup brush and just paint it on your face let it sit for around 20 to 30 minutes whatever your instructions say and then rinse it off and disinfect if you choose to do that, it numbs the top layer of your skin and you won't feel the needles. I actually prefer to feel the needles because then I can tell if I'm going too deep or if it's feeling too aggressive. But a lot of people do enjoy using uh, the lidocaine. So if you are one of those people, this would be your next step is to put your lidocaine on and let it start working. So with this microneedling pen, I disinfect the entire exterior of it and then I also disinfect my hyaluronic acid, which is the slip, the product I'll be using. I disinfect all of it as well. And then I wipe down my fingers really carefully so that basically anything I touch, I will have disinfected because I'm gonna do my very best to not get, um, to not get bacteria in my face. And some of you may have noticed I'm not wearing gloves. I have never really seen the point of gloves because if once I put gloves on, yes, the gloves are sterile, but if the gloves touch anything, they're going to transfer bacteria just like my skin would. So provided my, your skin is clean, you don't really have to use gloves, in my opinion. Now, you may find somebody who disagrees with me and wear gloves if you want. It's not going to hurt anything to wear them for sure. I wanted to start out by showing you the pen that I use. It's the Tha Pink Derma Pen. There are lots of other brands, and this is by no means sponsored or the only brand you can choose, but it's worked fine for me. The way it functions is you plug it in and charge it using the cord that comes with it, and I have found that one charge has lasted me months. Okay, the way this is used is pretty straightforward. You screw in a cartridge, that looks like this. I want to show you how these cartridges actually, the machine basically pushes like so the needles into your skin, creating little bitty micro channels that tricks your body into thinking there's damage. Well, there is damage, but it's minor damage. And then as your body heals, in theory, it creates more collagen. There's been studies to show this works. You screw your cartridge onto the end. There is a dial here where you can dial the depth that the needle will go into. It goes off from a zero, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, all the way up to, this one will go all the way up to two and a half millimeters deep. That is incredibly deep and I do not recommend you do that. Okay, now that we have our needles on there, here's how you turn it on. You just press and hold the button, and you'll see that there is a number. This has to do with how fast it's vibrating, how fast it's puncture, the needles are going in. So as you go up, it goes all the way up to a six. That's really, really fast. I usually go about a three. You can adjust and figure out what you prefer. You see that there's a red, there's red, green, blue, amber, 
they claim that these different lights do different things. I'm not sure that they're on your skin long enough to make any difference, but you can always use them if you choose. Okay, so for my forehead is where I will start, as you'll see in the demonstration that's coming. I choose at about a three or four, and I choose my depth at 0.75 today for my forehead. Okay, we're gonna start. So I use hyaluronic acid. This is from the Timeless. It doesn't really matter what brand you use. If you have sensitive skin or rosacea, I do not recommend you use any kind of actives when you do this. Um, it will just flare up your face or put it this way. Dang it, I keep stuck and touching my hair. I've got to wipe this. I've got an uh, alcohol pad down here. I keep wiping this on. Okay, so I do one small area at a time. Slip. You never want to do this on a dry face. And get generous. Like really put a bunch of it on there. There's two different ways you can do it. You can either go in circles like I'm doing here. and I kind of overlap. I'm really getting into those deep lines. The other way to do it is to make a crosshatch pattern. So, some people like to do it this way. They do vertical lines and then they do horizontal lines. And you see it makes a nice little square once you've moved on, don't go back over the same area over and over and over again. Your, your skin sort of closes up. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it doesn't keep taking the needle. It will really hurt and damage you if you... Okay, so I'm going to move to another area, but you see what I'm doing. I'm just going in little hash marks and you can see the bright red of where I'm going. I'm gonna move down here just to show you and then I'll go back and do the rest of my face. Hello, I'm back. My camera overheated and then just turned itself off and that was about two hours ago. Now I finally got it uh, recharged and cooled off and everything. I typically would have kept going. Um, I usually do my nasolabial folds across my chin, along my jaw, obviously my 11s and usually my entire forehead. I usually skip my, my uh, was it, the periorbital bone through here, and I usually skip the, the balls, you know, the apples of my cheeks because of the rosacea and the extreme sensitivity continue to spread the hyaluronic acid all over my face when I'm done just keep applying it and then I seal everything in with some aquaphor and then do nothing else until the next day the next day I will which will be tomorrow morning I'll get up just splash some water on my face and I don't use any actives um, for about 24 hours uh, usually about a week after I microneedle my 11s especially I notice that they appear a little bit softer now are they actually? I don't know. I don't use any Botox, so any softening would have to be due to the microneedling because I don't use Botox. But that's that's what I can that's what I can tell you at this point. Thanks for joining me during this bathroom chit chat. Uh, I'm not really a beauty vlogger, and so I don't really have a setup for it. So I appreciate you sticking with. I am sorry about the, the technical difficulties. We had some snafus. It's the next morning, and as you can see, the redness is gone. Um, I did use some slightly tinted Elta MD sunscreen, so that has covered a little bit, but the redness is gone. And that was using a 0.75 on my forehead and a 1.5 um, in sort of these more fleshy areas. So if you have sensitive skin or rosacea, I would strongly recommend you start out even more gentle than I do. Um, start out with maybe a 0.25 on your forehead and don't go over maybe a 0.75 or a 1 in these areas just to see how your body reacts. There's no reason to go too aggressively. You really want to just do enough at that dermis level that your body is stimulated to make some extra collagen. That's And at our age, we can use all the help we can get. So I do this once a month. Don't do it more often than that. It can really set your face on fire if you do. So I hope that this was helpful and I'd like to hear how it goes for you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.